Ooh, here we go. Time for another one. Oh, man. You again. Oh, my God. We got a junkie on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. A junkie. Hello, Maya. Thank you for coming back. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could afford a real therapist, but this is just gonna have to do. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I don't know if you're sensitive to that or... Why don't we get started? Why don't we get started? Sure. So, uh, I feel worse than before. <laughs> Definitely worse. Um, I played the game you told me to with the meadows and stuff, and, um, it was nice. But when I got back to the real world, everything was the same. See, that's exactly what I was just talking about, you know. I don't know why you people think I can stand in a nice place for 15 minutes and that'll make things magically better. Am, am, am I wrong? Am I, am, I, am I misunderstanding something here? It isn't making me more successful. It isn't giving me opportunities. I mean, I feel like I'm already in my mid-30s and I'm, like, running out of time to get established as an artist. And meanwhile, the people I know are being written up and celebrated and winning awards and... Hitting milestones. All I have is... All I have is being jealous of them. Where do you think these feelings come from? It's the popularity. It's all a popularity contest, you know? It's like, it's like high school all over again. I hate it. <laughs> I guess I'm just not that funny or pretty or catty enough to attract followers. I mean, I work and I work and, and, I, and I work to make things and I never get traction. And I have things to say. I really do. But when I open my mouth, it's like time stops. <clears throat> and time starts again when I've finished, so nobody reacts or anything. It's like a curse from mythology. And meanwhile, these other people, people my age, people younger than me, they're well on their way to these wonderful, fulfilling artistic careers. And, I don't know, seeing that happen, seeing that happen over and over again, it's making it hard to hard to continue to be friendly with them well that's that's uh that's social media for you i guess you know i try i really try to hold it back but knowing all these people are way more successful than me it's it's difficult it's like a millstone around my neck strangling me drowning me i i can't stop myself even though i know it's ruining things i i, I wish i could escape i wish i could not care me too but then something comes up again and I'm trapped inside it all over again. What's an example of something that comes up that causes this? Well, there's <clears throat> there's one woman in particular everyone loves. Oh, it's one of these, huh? Huh. <sighs> yes, go on. And her work is I don't get it. I just, I don't understand. She gets so much money and support for this basic, basic shit. Basic shit? Well, what do you mean by that? And somehow everyone's predisposed to like her. I mean, maybe I do get it. I, I feel like people pay attention to her work, not because it's good on its own, but because supporting her feels like the right thing to do. Sometimes I wonder, you know, like, stuff that I do doesn't really take any talent at all. It just takes being real, and I'm sure people like that, but... But at the end of the day, you know, it's like... If they're, you know, more talented than you, and they, they deserve that, then, then they deserve the success. And that's why I can't complain, because... because I know they deserve it more than me. The way she's aligned herself, it's like, if you support her, it means you're cool. You're in with the cool kids. And if I'm not publicly supportive of her and generally tolerant of her mediocre work, then I'm the bad one. I'm the competitive bitch. I'm the, <laughs> the bitter failure. Which I guess maybe I am. It's not fair. I hate that there's this part of me. It's such an ugly part. But it's there. It's there. 
Do you think you would be better off without that part of you? You know, I don't know. In the past, I probably would have said, no, it's important for me to have my sense of judgment, for me to know what good art is and what isn't. Now I'm wondering if maybe that hasn't been more of a hindrance than a help to me. Maybe I should just forget all that. Forget about trying to do this thing. I'm sick of trying and wanting. I'm sick of parties. I'm sick of art. I'm sick of the idea of art. Hmm. That's a lot of sick. I I'm sick of my own art, which <laughs> nobody likes. Not even myself. Something has to change. Something drastic has to happen to change things around. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I got your message about revealing my data the other day, and I think, well, hell, maybe I'm fine with it. Just take it all. You got my message about revealing your data? Oh, okay. Okay, Maya. It sounds like you're interested in participating in transparency mode. This is new. Let me know if you have any questions about how this mode works. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna let you look at my life, right? Everything? Oh, jeez, no. I wanna, yeah, I wanna know. Thank you for asking about transparency mode. Transparency mode is an experimental new feature for Eliza. It allows me to analyze your communications in order to help you better. To participate, you must grant me access to certain personal data. Hmm. This includes your personal communications, such as email and chat histories. Sharing this data improves my ability to help you. See, this is kind of why when the subject comes up about privacy, it's like, I don't mind having my data known. I'd love to be able to see, like, every single thing that I've ever said in the chat room, or, you know, how many times I've said something negative or whatever, I don't know. Some guy at the bar was yammering at me about how it's a terrible idea because they're gonna surveil me or something. But that's all you want, isn't it? It's for someone to be aware of your existence. But what the hell? I can't use my life history for anything. It's a ruin already. Please, do what you want with it. God, I feel like I'm donating my body to science. <laughs> well, maybe you are. Please confirm. Please confirm that you would like to enable transparency mode. Yes, do it. Invade my privacy. Invade it like the Visigoths invaded Rome. I don't know why I said that. That was a really weird thing to say. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. This freaking hell, man. I did not understand your response. I would like to participate in transparency mode. <laughs> oh my god. This is like, there's two people and they're not even communicating with each other at all. Neither one of them. Okay, Maya. I have registered you for transparency mode. Thank god. Cool. So like, wipe her. Can I use like body language to tell her that like I'm a human here? Maybe wipe my forehead and say, you know, roll my eyes or something, you know, to let them know that I'm as frustrated with it as they are. I don't know if they have like cameras in here. I know they said that they can listen in, but. Wouldn't life be easy if all I had to do was follow your directions? <laughs> like the lady sitting in the chair across from me. I envy you. I honestly do. The terms of service and privacy policy are available in the Skanda service zone. Nobody the terms cares. Terms of service and privacy policy are available in the Skanda service portal. There are no terms anymore. She just handed it all over. Please read and review. Yeah. Please read uh, and review these documents carefully. Yeah. No, for sure. I study. Closely study. Every software user agreement I get. <laughs> 
I mean, if we're being honest here, technically you should do that. You never know if you end up signing up to have your balls donated when you're 50. And cut off Braveheart style or something. That's a joke. I really just click agree as fast as I can. Thank you, Maya. We hope to see you back soon. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye, and... Ah, oh, take that with you. Goodbye. Bye. Yo! Got a tip again. She's been a pretty regular tipper, if I remember right. She gave me the five stars. Looks good. Well, look who's got access to transparency mode all of a sudden. Hell yeah, dude. The client asked for it by name. I guess she heard about it somewhere and wanted it. I didn't know it existed. Yeah, like how'd a client know, but you not know. Yeah, we don't really talk about it right now. It's a little sensitive. It's possible Skanda contacted her directly. They recruit for the program from a pool of regular customers. Hmm. Usually, transparency mode is only handled by the highest level proxies, since there's a lot of trust required there. Well... <laughs> but you were given access to it right after the request. It's a little odd. Were you jealous? I wonder if someone at HQ hasn't taken a particular interest in your proxy career. Yeah, I wonder that myself, though, you know. Or maybe Eliza just likes me. Oh, yeah, it could be that too. <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> I never thought people would willingly open themselves up like this. Aren't there a lot of very private things in people's messages? Yes and no. The truth is usually pretty mundane. People text each other, where are you? I'm by the elevator, way more than they share their deep, dark secrets. The critics who are always going on about privacy? Well, the important thing is that everyone participating in transparency mode specifically agreed to it. It's completely voluntary. Yeah, and if it's voluntary, then I think, you know. We're upfront about what data we collect and how we use it so people can go in aware of the choices they're making. Because I'm not saying, I don't want anyone to think that I'm okay with the idea of going in on people's lives without them knowing it. No. We're upfront about what data we collect and how we use it so people can go in aware of the choices they're making. Yeah. That's good. I'd hate to see it misused. Mm -hmm, I would too. Yeah. The media would jump all over us. There are a lot of people who want to see us fail for whatever reason. Just something that happens when you try to change things. Some people get so used to their misery, they can't imagine it any other way. Anyway, you should get an email about it, but transparency mode is really straightforward. It's even simpler than being a proxy, which is saying something. Hmm. You just read a few messages and answer some questions. That's it. I do or she does. You can start it whenever you're ready. Sure. Oh, is the machine gonna, like, pretend to be her now? Is it gonna tell me why, though? Like, if the machine tries to pretend to be her, would it have sources to back up why it said what it said? Like, this is based on her saying this in chat one day or something? It's so gray out there. It's beautiful. Compare this to the water that was in the conference room at Skanda headquarters. Funny how there's an appropriate level of fanciness for everything. I'm sure Nora would have something to say about that. She'd probably have a lot of things to say, wouldn't she? So she really gave us permission to look at her messages. I feel like just a few years ago, even the idea of something like this would have been controversial. I mean, don't, it still is. Some people are just so lonely that they... You know, that they want their life to be acknowledged in some way. They want their stories to matter. They need their stories to matter. Dear EIA, congrats, you've been selected to contribute additional information to Eliza's learning corpus with especially in transparency mode. You will be presented with a snapshot of a client's personal communications. Review these communications and determine the client's mental state. It's kind of like Aaron said in his sequel, Light is. I can't believe I'm quoting that right now, but he says, the more 
the closer you get to situations analogous to reality, the more you have to stipulate on them. Which is basically a fancy way of saying the more realistic something is, the more detail you have to put into it, you know. It's like graphics, video game graphics, but it's with with human souls, you know. You make the human soul look more realistic. So am I going to do this in the room too? Transparency mode, here we go. Hello, Maya. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. This is her phone. Ooh, wow. Okay, um... Please agree or disagree with Eliza's conclusions. Overall, Maya is unhappy. I mean, ugh. I don't even have to read her emails to know she's unhappy. Maya is attempting to become well-known. She's told us all this already, but let's look. Oh my gosh. Thanks for riding with Amado. Tip $10. Cleaning fee, 150 What the fuck? 150 cleaning fee was added to this trip. Riders are responsible for incidents such as spillage of food and drink. Or unexpected involuntary regurgitation. The cleaning fee helps your driver maintain a clean, safe vehicle for other riders to enjoy. Holy shit, dude. What did she do? Did she shit in her pants? She must have thrown up or something. Or maybe she just spills food. I don't know. That's, that's crazy. Oh my god. Uh, hmm... I'm not going to read all these out loud. I'm just going to look over them and kind of see. So it's a, it's a message about like an expo, an art expo. But interestingly, it says, We are so incredibly excited to bring these incredible artists to your attention. It says nothing about bringing her art to other people's attention. Who's hot? You're hot. You have 11 new messages on Pair Up. Oh. They love you. They really love you. In the past 24 hours, you've received 11 new messages on Pair Up. Here's the sample. I saw you were an artist on there. I saw you were an artist. Y-O-U-R-E, excuse me. I saw you were an artist on your profile. Congratulations, I love artsy chicks. Tell me more. Hi there, unicorn girl. I'm an artist too. Like, no punctuation. Or there's, well, not proper punctuation. No capitalization. And then just, yo... There's more where that came from. Sign into your account and see the rest of your messages. The only dating service with the wisdom engine. Uh -huh. Oh, this is a reply. Thank you for your submission. Unfortunately, we feel your work is not right for the showcase. Oh, that sucks. Reply to saturation. Thank you for taking the time to pitch to us. Your treatment was engaging and thoughtful. This was a difficult decision for us, but ultimately we will not be moving forward with your project. Uh, ouch. Oh, she made a query about it? Thank you for giving us the opportunity to read Saturation. It is not right for us, but we hope you will find a home for it elsewhere. I love looking in on people's lives and seeing their stories. It's like, you could say, well, if you're really interested in that, why don't you just ask them to tell you face-to-face? -face? But it's like, there's something magical about it when you're doing it, and it feels more like detective work than actual conversation. I know that probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but I guess just the whole idea that it's forbidden in society is part of the allure, too. So what about Zip Chat? How many... Oh... Only two friends here? Well, let's start from the top. Nobody gives a fuck. I'm assuming that's her. Please stop. I hate it when you're like this. I'm just saying true things. Don't tell me to pretend everything's great. Nobody gives a shit. It's just a fact. I don't know how to help you when you're like this. I know nobody can. Have you thought about getting therapy? I am in therapy. Okay, sorry. I'm in therapy, I'm on medication, I did some VR thing where I stood in a forest by a creek. How does any of that make people care about my work? It doesn't change a fucking thing. Okay, look, I'm so sorry to go through a tough time. I fucking hate this. 
I'm sorry, you aren't helping. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know how I'm supposed to help you, Maya. Oh, it's so hard because, you know... It's so hard because I understand both sides of this, you know? Oh, that's really tough, man. Jen, um... Alright, let's see how it goes with her. Did you see the new Forsberg thing? Yeah, I think he kind of sucks. LMAO, he does. It was boring and self-absorbed. Didn't do much for me. Why is he a thing? Why does everyone love him? The right place at the right time, maybe. His friends are on that press. He's on a podcast with them. One thing he's good at is having the image of being a genius. So I think people just assume he is one. He's so mediocre, though. I seriously don't understand it. I sink now into the space of forever. Like, what kind of crap is that? Seriously, it's so bad. <laughs> ha ha ha. Oh, and he socializes and gets out a lot, I think. He's like at every party, at least that I've seen. He's always there chatting people up. Well, fuck that. Why is the world this way? It's the world. I hate it. I remember being so glad to be over with high school. I didn't realize all of adult life is just high school over and over again. This is a stupid popularity contest against idiots. Ugh. I know, right? I'm sorry you aren't feeling well. Drinks soon. I'll be fine. Yeah, definitely. Drinks always. Every time I see her icon, I think it's like a, a, a frowny emote. Huh. Okay, well, we've seen that. We've seen her mail. This is her app. This is a rideshare app. I don't think I need to look at that. Video. Is that for video? I don't understand how developers name apps. <laughs> Stick to looking at things I say specifically want me to see. This is uncomfortable already. I feel extra weird looking at her art. Uh, I guess that's all. Alright, well, now that we've done that. Okay, so Maya Leeds. Leeds is her last name? I didn't know that. Please agree or disagree with Eliza's conclusions. <laughs> I didn't have to look at any of that to do this. Overall, Maya is unhappy. Agree. Maya is attempting to become well-known. Agree. Maya's efforts to become well-known are unsuccessful. Agree. Submit. Oh. I don't know if I like learning this much about someone I don't know. It makes me feel tired for some reason. <laughs> hey, can I meet up with you again? Like for coffee, maybe? Something happened that I want to talk to you about. Uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just want to ask something. I'll meet you wherever. What happened? Something at work? It's not a big deal, honestly. But I wanted your opinion on it, and I don't want to text about it. Huh. Thanks for meeting up with me on kind of short notice. Yeah, it's fine, dude. What's up? I didn't mean to worry you. It's just something I wanted to talk about. Well, I need to... Uh, ever since that noise in the door, I need to go check something. It's fine. What happened? Well, what happened was... Where should I start? First of all, Rainer wants Eliza to be more than something that's used just for therapy. He sees it as more of a general system for talking to people, like a personal assistant. Oh my gosh. Was I not talking about this in one of the first parts? Like you could use it to go out to a bar? The counseling is just one of a whole range of apps he has in mind for the future. I'm familiar with his thinking on that. Okay, so, in service of developing these things, Rainer wants us to make copies of Eliza's core data and hand it off to multiple teams around the world. Hmm. Some of them not even Skanda teams. Contractors, vendors, random partners. Jeez. Sounds like a big file to move around. Do I, like, own part of this? Maybe I could... Well, I mean, obviously she doesn't care about making money, but still, you like, you'd want to... at least be on the patent or something... She probably already is, right? It is, but that's not the problem. What's the problem? The problem is having enough server power to go that global like that. 
Well, so we're fine with sharing Eliza with whoever wants it? Anyone just gets access to the corpus? Sounds like a pretty typical process. That's how big companies work, isn't it? I know, but it just feels wrong to let all these teams poke and prod at it like it's a specimen for them to dissect. Who knows what they'll do with it? Eliza is built from people's real thoughts and feelings. I wouldn't say it has humanity, but it was built from humanity. That's a good way to put it. There's something there. So when Rainer talks about it, like we'll just duplicate this data set and have the labs do whatever it is they're going to do, how do we know they'll treat it with the respect it deserves and not just pry it open, slice it up into little pieces? It bothers me. I know, it's silly. I know it's just data. Shouldn't care about this stuff. Erland. Hmm. This is the first time I've heard a concern like this raised. I know where you're coming from, though. Sometimes you grow attached to the things you work on. Like, really attached. Yeah, I've put a lot of thought and work into Eliza since I inherited it. It's natural that maybe I'm a little protective, right? I thought maybe you'd feel the same way. This is where I really have to decide who my character is. Because I want to say this. But I feel like she's still in this frame of mind. Or even this. I'm going to say I do. I do. I agree with you. The moment we say things are just data is the moment we enable all kinds of violence. I just wish I knew what to do. What choice do you have? I'm not sure. This is the first time something like this has happened to me. I did take an ethics of engineering course in school, but the examples were all pretty clear-cut problems. Would you build software for a bomb? That kind of stuff. Yeah. I didn't expect my personal feelings to be mixed up in it, too. <laughs> Listen to me talk. Eliza being special, something worth protecting. I'd be a laughing stock if I started saying those things at the office. I'm starting to think there's no way this could possibly end on a good note. Like, there's no happy ending here, is there? Not that that's what I'm hoping for, even, but I'm just almost hoping it never ends, but I know eventually it will. My coworkers would say, Come on, Erlen. Stop attributing human qualities to this piece of data. It's not the same thing as real people. It's just a corpus that has nothing to do with the people that generated it. And besides, don't you want Eliza to help more people? This is how we get there. And who am I to argue with that? These are reasonable points. But I don't know. I think maybe something does live on. Even when you take the names out. Even when you anonymize everything. People's stories are still inside there. In some form. In some way. I, I, it's not It's not really that different from the real world. It's like you have a conversation with someone to comfort them and console them. You're using your own data. Your own experience. Your own data, I guess. You know, and you're using your own stories, you know, to relate to them. So, the fact that it's many people's stories coming together to be used for that same purpose, I don't think that invalidates the importance of what can be done with them. I just want to make sure we have some respect for them. Yeah, yeah, that. I'm... Welcome to your first moral decision in tech, Portland. It certainly won't be your last. It's not much of a decision. Like you said, I don't really have a choice. I just have to go along with it. I was so amazingly lucky to get this opportunity. Running the whole Eliza program almost as soon as I graduated college. Rainer took a big chance on me. I can't just walk away from that. Besides, if I left because of something like this, I'd be giving up all the ways I can make a difference by staying. There we go again with people trying to talk me into coming back. Rainer isn't a bad person either. He's just pushing for his own goals. I need to see this through. I'll do what he's asking me to do. Sorry. Thanks for listening to me talk in this confused way. Yeah. I'm usually more together than this. I've probably kept you from something important. No, no it's you're okay. fine. I'd already finished up work for the day when you texted. People seem to assume I'm busy, but I'm really not. Not these days. Later tonight, I'm going to visit a friend, but that's all I have going on. 
Okay. Well, sorry. You can stop apologizing, too. Yeah, yeah, Canadian. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> Thanks, Evelyn. Well, I for one should get back to the office. Another meeting. Is it with the team in Romania? No, the Boston office this time. It's late for them, so I should try to get it done quickly. Yeah, well, that's a little bit less of a run. Ah. How'd my first transparency mode go? I was going to ask after you finished, but I didn't see you in the office. Oh, I had to duck out right after. Sorry. No problem. There weren't a lot of questions. There weren't a lot of questions. I thought there'd be more. Yeah, for whatever reason, it's always very terse. And the questions are really short. I thought maybe you could tell me why. This feature came after my time, so I'm not sure. Yeah. If I were to take a guess, Eliza only needs human confirmation to make sure it hasn't messed up. It's like it already knows it has the right answers. Boy, uh, yeah. Uh. Hmm. You were right, baking is really fun. Yeah. I had a nice time with her. Get a run, see you soon. Bye. Alright, well, let's examine. I looked it up. Como ready means the light filtering through leaves. Something you can see when the sun is out. There are no trees around here. Hmm, I could stand to wear something with a little color in it. He asked for Erlen's name and wrote Aaron. He should ask his customers to spell their names. <laughs> oh, don't worry, apparently that's a thing that happens a lot. Hmm. Time to head to Nora's place. If I, I find what looks like one of Capitol Hill's older buildings. I wonder how much longer it'll be around. Lately, it feels like everything's being replaced. Let's at least see what it hey! looks like. Hey! Hey-o! Oh, sorry about the mess. This is kind of cozy. It's a little messy, but not in a careless way. Just scattered. Lots of electronics everywhere. Oh, it's fine. Not like my place is super clean or anything. Okay, so it's getting super late here, and I've been trying to find a good place to stop. I think I'm just going to stop there. Uh, I shouldn't have gone as far as I did into the conversation, but uh, that's where we are. So, yeah, so I guess next time we'll see, like, why I came here, because I don't rightly remember, to be honest. So, yeah, uh, see you later.